Friends, it is Friday, March 18th, 2022, and I am speaking to you about a wonderful passage uh, in Matthew 23, 1-7. Again, this is a tough passage. This is Matthew's passage of woes that, toward the Pharisees. But we want to listen as Jesus uh, teaches us something about the character of leadership, gives us a criteria for understanding good leadership. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Very interesting sentence. It's hard for us to get that. But again, when teachers taught, like when Jesus taught in a synagogue, he would sit on a seat. This was a sign of, um, it was kind of a claim to authority. And no one sat on a more important seat than Moses. So Jesus is saying, there's a time when the Pharisees are correctly interpreting Moses. They're sitting, it's as if they're sitting on his seat with him. And they're teaching you things that are real and important and and line up with God's will. And when that happens, you must do whatever they teach and follow. But, Jesus says, ooh, and this hurts if you're a leader. Do not do as they do. For you know what? They're teachers who do not practice what they're telling you to do. In fact, listen to this. This is so hard to hear as a teacher. They tie up heavy burdens that are hard for people to carry. They put them on the shoulders of others, and they don't lift a finger to help. Ow. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad. Phylacteries were little pieces that had the Torah here. They make them broad, and their fringes long. They would have long fringes. This was part of what was described in in Deuteronomy 6. And they love to have the places of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues. They're showing off in their spirituality. And to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. Uh, wow. There are a whole sense series of, of criticisms there. Um, but the most telling for me is that we can have a great pride in our spirituality that is, that is really not... Um, fitting with our great need for God's help in everything we do and say. I mean, we're in this interesting position as Christians where apart from God, we can do nothing. Jesus says this in John chapter 15. I'm the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Diddly squat. But we, we know later, with me, you can do all things. I mean, with me, you can do amazing things. And this is forgotten when we're so proud about what we're doing particularly as leaders, and um, we, fail to, we fail to even follow through on the things we're asking other people to do. Uh, and in particular, we make their lives harder, and we can do that as teachers. We can make people's lives more complicated rather than less complicated. We can, Albert Einstein said a wonderful thing. <laughs> we want to make things as simple as, it, as, as we can, but not simpler. I mean, there are some things that are hard and we don't want to oversimplify them. But what the Pharisees were doing, we're making like the obligation of generosity we've been studying this week, which is, is a straightforward thing. We can support the work that God is doing in the world. We have a portion of our income. We can do this as a discipline. It's joyous. It's exciting. Each one gets to bless every other one. We're now part of all the things God is doing in the world. We can res- then respond as a community to emergent needs and bless people, God creates opportunities for us. Fantastic, right? And they made it so complicated that ordinary people couldn't do it, having to tithe all their spices and do all these other obscure practices. Um, this is uh, this is a spirituality formed on fear. They were afraid of breaking the Sabbath. They are afraid of not tithing correctly. And so they, they, they made it more and more complicated in a way that made everyone else's lives uh, uh, really miserable. And in fact, most people didn't do these things. They didn't do all the Sabbath commands. They didn't do all the food laws. And they didn't do all the tithing stuff because it was just too much to do. There were 600 and some laws. And so they saw themselves confined, confined to being unrighteous. And they could look around the world and say, well, we're not doing all those commandments. We're unrighteous. They're the righteous ones. And in effect, they had it upside down. Because God never intended to burden them with all these detailed regulations. He wanted them to have the clarity and the simplicity of the Ten Commandments and the straightforward uh, directions of God about what it means to be a person who keeps covenants and promises and, and uh, is, is, is honest in relationships and speaks the truth. 
and has sexual purity, you know, and, and, and keeps the, the, the covenants uh, that are involved with uh, family and is responsible as a parent or a child and is, you know, faithful in their worship. These are straightforward things that God knows will bless us and make us whole. And that that's what became more confusing and more difficult because of the Pharisees' fear and elitism. Let's take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, we don't want to be driven by rules, but by relationships in particular, by the love and mercy that you want us to show to others. And so we don't want to make things too simple, but we want to make things as simple as they are in the things we do and say and teach so that there's clarity and we can bless those around us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.